Trap tricks are back at it again with a new innovation. Of course, you gotta love the cluster pile trap decks. And agents are back with a nice surprise. Make sure you guys smash the like and crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more Oz content. Hmm. Trap tricks, yeah. The fact we have insects and plants in here is always gonna be a very fun thing. Get the chance to get some synergy with. But now we've got the chance to play the Ragnarika cards in this deck to kind of set up some, I guess, pretty interesting extension options slash support because, you know, having these little extra deck cards down here that actually give you access to some searchability for the hunting dance is worth exploring. Now, I want to talk about this. When your opponent activates a spell card that includes an effect special summons, we can special summon this from hand, and if summoned this way, while face up, any cards in the graveyard becomes banished and said, and if it's in the graveyard, and an earth insect monster with 1500 or less attack from your deck to your hand. Well, unfortunately, um, you are going to get a free search off of that, which, hmm, you gotta, it's just, this is an interesting level of synergy kind of built into the deck that I don't think most of the modern era Trap Tricks players have really had the chance to explore. And also, this build's actually playing Chain Hole in here. I have not considered Chain Hole as a real option card for this deck, but it is another trap hole that does kind of check the marks for what you want to be attempting to do with this deck. So once again, as many answers as you can find yourself, I guess, trying to accomplish with this will be good. Um, in terms of Ragna Rika stuff, um, one armored lizard, the one beetle, two evil seed, and then of course, Two copies of the bloom. So you've got a you got a pretty decent ratio built into this. And then of course your extra deck down here. We are getting the chance to play Jazz the fact that you have access to Jasmine and then you know Bagalancer as well. That leaves some uh very interesting things to see what you can kind of develop in the meta with a deck like this. So don't underestimate, you know, insect plant good stuff. Yeah, honestly. It's just Trap Tricks Turbo, baby. Oh, right. I wanted to cover this because this deck has been showing up a lot more as of late. And a lot more people, I guess, are just confused as to how this deck works. So you see this card? Soldier Dragons, when your opponent activates a card or effect, we can special summon a level 2 or lower dragon monster from our deck. And then you actually bring out the Dragon Maid Laundry here because she fits the bill for being a level 2 or lower dragon. And then on summon, you can send the top 3 cards of your deck to the graveyard. Okay, so free special summon out. Free mill one of my 42 trap cards from my deck. Oh, well, sign me up, actually. The whole big thing about this is you are using the Paleo cards now to start being relatively large chum blockers or the ability for these incredibly stupid things to process on up into the Toad. Honestly, most of your value is just coming from Opabenia and Animalarchus down here just because they both say unaffected by other monster effects. So guess what? When you're getting the chance to start, you know, stacking these on up, getting them back into the graveyard, and as long as you have trap cards to continuously reuse these, Okay. And then, of course, it always comes back to the good old transaction rollbacks. This build is also playing Wabakus, which is freaking hilarious. Um, you do need to have that emergency no button in case your opponent starts to pressure you really, really hard. All right. And, you know, Tempai Dragon's getting the chance to kind of steal games out here. As much fun as it might not be, I do think that you need to have this card present as a option for you to do, especially in a trap deck where you've already got trap tricks, you may as well have these. I guess Threatening Roar would be an option too, but I guess you don't really care if your opponent starts swinging and get those once per duel effects out of the way, but why would they actually use those? And then of course, you have Double Witch's Strike down here as well. Good stuff. Woo! We have Agent Runic for you. Now, there is one duelist that has dedicated pretty much their entire dueling career to this deck. And they've been trying to find some pretty interesting ways to try to innovate this deck. And I think they've done a fantastic job here. Um, honestly, this agent stuff, uh, the combo that this deck actually can do, because Hugin being a level two gets you, as long as you have, you know, one of the maybe you normal summoned earth, and then you have the runic spell card to get to the Hugin, uh, that turns into full sprite combo along the side. So. It, it's a lot of you start initially off with a the agent baseline 
honestly from yeah what I've seen from most of the combo that I've seen from Nicholas playing uh, the dedicated first line is usually going to be the Earth Venus try to scout out and see what you can do depending on combo and then you kind of follow it up with the runic stuff and then at the end of all of that then you can extend on into the sprite stuff to kind of start to ensure that you can do your thing I also find it very interesting here that obviously you have access to cross out and I also want to point out here because we have all of these different moving pieces in this deck, Crossout actually becomes an insanely broken card here. Because if you run into anything like Runic on the ladder, besides, you know, the purpose of this being here to stop hand traps from ruining your day, being able to blink out a tip or a fountain from your opponent, I mean, obviously hitting your own fountain stinks, but uh, since we're only playing one of them, but being able to hit one of these key cards in another matchup is really dumb. And also, I mean, you can blink out reframing if you need to on a kill turn uh, if you have the cross out and you're playing against Man of Diem. Interesting little things like this that you look at in these, these builds and you're like, holy crap, you can actually do that. This card's offensive capabilities get more and more interesting um, when you have hybrid deck builds like this. Next up here, we have Flanderies. Now, yes, I know we're covering a Flander list. Yes, I know Flu has not been genuinely the most exciting thing to look out here in the meta, but I, I always try to see what you know people are dropping in in terms of ideas. You know, like what kind of innovations are we trying out here for the birds? And honestly, this is kind of cute to see. Um, I do see that we are playing a Snell in here. Snell has definitely not been the greatest one, and depending on the level of play that you're playing at, um, having this card be present in your deck can cover you some uh, places here. Um, some other interesting things here. Um, only two M pens. Um, there has been a fairly recent argument with people trying out three. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, but you've got a little bit of room for discussion on what you want to do. You do still see the one standard Dark Roller No More in here. I think this has also been a huge thing as of late as well. Having this card built into the deck kind of ensures you a nice little option to break through a board and do your thing. I also find it hilarious that they shoved a Gotham's down here as well. Uh, they're also playing the Scary C. Now, Scary C, I, I've seen in a lot of dueling book testing as of recently. You walk in on the, the random like mid-range duels for playtesting. This card's been starting to show up. And it's honestly because of the fact that you get the free board set against your opponent. Um, which actually is kind of interesting. Um, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll have to wait and see. Oh no, it's it's not that it's it's the the limiting of this that matters. Man, I don't know why I was thinking that. Uh, it's it's this very good card that does that. Um, outside of that, flu innovations, pretty standardized. I you just don't get a chance to see this deck do its thing because M Pen can be hit or miss. Ooh, we have Edison here for you today. Uh, the reason why I chose to put Edison in the back of this video. Uh, Edison's innovations, especially in like the Machina department, have been very, very interesting. And of course, a legacy of Yada Garasu out here. Hey, a free trap card that you can bait your opponent into misteeing or, you know, targeting with a Caius or something. I don't know why they should be targeting your back or they should be targeting the monster, but you know, that's a big old difference out here. Also, the Machina Fortresses to get these 2,500 monsters online whose purpose is to rip options away from your opponent if they target it. Uh, of course, the whole giant recycle ability here. And I also see that we have Fossil Dyna Pachycephalos down here. Uh, this is actually interesting. Um, Fossil Dyna being able to kind of punish your opponent as a key normal summon was not something that we initially saw back in the day with a lot of this format. But being able to have this be an option that you can side in I find very interesting. Um, outside of that, I mean, your trap board is incredibly standard. Not a lot of real modifications or changes that you need to make to that. You just need to understand that, you know, you're still playing Edison. The format's a lot slower, but this Machina package is in here just kind of being good pieces that you can set up and just put large monsters on the field. Push for the game easier is actually pretty incredible. So what do you guys think about the innovations of Yu-Gi-Oh! as late. Please leave a comment down below, tell me what you guys think, and remember, just because something doesn't look fun to play doesn't mean there's not plenty of options out there. You guys have a good rest of your day, alright? 
patrons. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.